Should I go fixed or variable? Let's do this. How's it going? My name is John and I am a mortgage broker located in Vancouver. If you want to learn ways to approve for a mortgage, home buying tips, and other mortgage related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking on the notification bell so you won't miss anything. One of the most common questions I get is, should I go fixed or variable rate? Well, let's break it down. There are actually two bets you're making. Let's start off with the first one. Obviously, it's the rate. What's the best rate? Well, in general, variable rate tends to be lower than fixed rate. But what if prime rate increases? Oh, that's really scary. So I'm gonna go with fix. Or you may be like, oh, I'm totally okay with rate changing. So I just want the best rate. Well, here's something to think about. So say your variable rate is 2% and fixed rate is 2.5%. I usually get asked, oh no, I hope variable rate never goes up to like 2.75 because that'll be paying more than if I had the fixed rate. That's actually incorrect way of thinking. You actually don't want the rate to go beyond 3%. Well, why? It's because you forgot you saved when rates were between 2 to 2.5%. Once you pass 2.5%, then you're actually just using your savings you had before. And once you hit 3%, then that's when you break even. If you look at prime rates history, rarely does rate go up that quickly. But the other bet is the big one. It's the bet that banks win most of the time and people don't know much about it. And that's the mortgage penalty. What actually happens if you break the mortgage early? Well, you won't. You sign up for five years, I'm going to keep it for five years. But actually, statistics shows that two thirds of people actually break their mortgage within 33 months or just about three years. You know, life happens. You need to move for a new job, your family grows, you lost your job and you have to sell. So things can happen. And banks know this and, and they take advantage of it. They make a good bulk of their money just from penalties. The average mortgage size is $400,000 in Canada. If you had a five-year fixed rate, your penalty is calculated by the interest rate differential. Now well, that's just a complicated formula, but in general, it's around 4.5% of the mortgage balance. On a $400,000 mortgage, that's about $18,000. But with a variable, it's different. The penalty is capped at three months interest penalty. Some banks calculate the rate at prime or at contract rate. So I'm going to use the prime rate at 2.45 because it's higher to better prove my point. The three months interest on a $400,000 mortgage at 2.45 is only 2,450. That's going to be your penalty. That is a $15,550 difference. And you didn't even know about this because you just thought about the rate, but the banks get you at the end of the mortgage because you can't time the sale of your property exactly on the date of your mortgage maturity. So for me, in my opinion, I'm all for variable. Don't be afraid of the rate fluctuating. Be more afraid of the penalty you get hit at the end when you pay out the mortgage. And there you go. We just went over whether you should go fixed or variable. And please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to learn more. And make sure you click on the notification bell so you won't miss a video. I'm John Lee, mortgage broker and CEO of Rise Mortgage. We are always achieving your approval.